Hello, and welcome back to Wind Chemistry. I'm going to go over matter, properties, and changes, and we'll discuss some of the more fundamental things in chemistry. After this lesson, you'll learn how to identify substances based on their different characteristics. So as the name implies, a physical property can be anything that's picked up by your five senses. This might also include taste, odor, density, melting point, so on and so forth. Furthermore, physical properties can be divided into intensive and extensive properties. Extensive depends on the amount present. This is something that you would have to measure. So for example, length, mass, volume. If you have a chunk of clay and you chop it up, okay, it's all going to have different lengths and masses and volumes. Those are examples of extensive properties. Meanwhile, intensive properties do not depend on how much is there. So for example, take some water. If you have a gallon of water or you have a drop of water, the density of water will remain the same. It's still one gram per cubic centimeter. Or the melting point of ice is still the same. Whether you have 10 grams of ice or if you have 1,000 grams of ice, it all melts at zero degrees Celsius. Or if you want to boil water, water will always boil at 100 degrees Celsius regardless of how much is there. Chemical properties is the ability of a substance to change into something else or to combine with a different substance. So a very good example is iron rusting. So iron, when it combines with oxygen, turns into something else. It turns into rust or iron oxide. You can see in the equation above me, the iron is no longer by itself. It's now combined with oxygen to make a completely different substance we call rust. Even with these changes taking place, whether they're physical changes or chemical changes, you have to understand that the law of conservation of mass still takes place. And that simply just means whatever you start with on the reactant side is what you'll also end up with on the product side. So you might think that burning a stack of wood or burning some logs might result in the log just disappearing. But actually it leaves behind ash and then there's also smoke. So if you have 31 kilograms of reactants, you should expect 31 kilograms of products on the other side as well. That's the law of conservation of mass. Let's check out problem number 12. This is an example of the law of conservation of mass. So you have water breaking down chemically into hydrogen and oxygen. And they tell you you retrieve 10 grams of hydrogen and 79.4 grams of oxygen. They want to know how much water you started with. Well, it's just simple algebra. Just add the masses of your products together and you get 89.4 grams of water. All right, number 14 requires you to be a little bit craftier. So I've written down the equation. So aluminum plus bromine yields aluminum bromide. And they tell you you start with 10.3 grams of aluminum, 100 grams of bromine. And there's also other information that's provided. So after the reaction, zero grams of aluminum remained. Whereas for bromine, you didn't use it all up. Eight and a half remained. And then they ask you, well, how much bromine, how many grams of bromine reacted? Just go 100 minus 8.5, you get 91.5 grams of bromine, uh, which reacted. Okay, and the second part of the problem, how many grams of compound were formed? So now you're going to go 10.3 for aluminum because all of it was used up in the reaction, plus the 91.5 grams of bromine. And you add the two numbers up, you're going to get 101.8 grams. So that's the total mass of compound that formed from this reaction. As you start learning about physical and chemical changes and substances reacting and igniting and mixing with each other, you also have to understand a little bit about mixtures as well. There are two types of mixtures. You could have heterogeneous mixtures or you can have homogeneous mixtures. Hetero, the root hetero means different, so that means you could see all the different layers. So an example of a heterogeneous mixture would be like oil and water, or you can have a heterogeneous mixture of sand and water. You can see the different layers and the components just by looking at it. Whereas with a homogeneous mixture, the different layers aren't so apparent. So take Gatorade for example. This is an example of a homogeneous mixture because Gatorade is comprised of water, sugar, food coloring, different minerals and salts that are in it, and the different layers and the different components aren't so apparent when you first look at it. 
it, because this is all uniformly mixed and it's evenly distributed throughout. So homogeneous or the root homo means the same. It looks like just one thing. So sometimes a homogeneous mixture is referred to as a solution. Speaking of solutions, I'll talk to you about alloys, which are a type of metal solutions in matter part two. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on wind chemistry.